Doesn't matter who you are, what level you are, how atrocious the competition was, you would have done at least one thing right. <sighs> and you wouldn't have been absolutely perfect. There's always something that could have been done better. So what was good? What could be better? How can I make that happen next time? Really quick, easy way of going over past competition. I often have um, athletes write down, keep a booklet where they have kind of a sports-specific evaluation of their training and competition. And at the very bottom, a lot of it's just circle, you know, good, poor performance in terms of a particular skill and identify what a good performance is and a poor performance is. I don't just say good and bad. So, for example, volleyball serve. A good serve is you're finding the holes in the court rather than serving straight to someone. <laughs> you're, after you serve, you're making your position on the court rather than standing back and admiring what a great serve that was. <laughs> So you have a variety of different things that they circle, so it's very easy to see, and it doesn't take a lot of time. But at the bottom, after doing that for a bunch of events and mental skills, I always have one thing I did really well today was, and remember for next time. And then that remember for next time, I can then pick into up for my next training session. So what did I say I was going to remember for this training session? Same thing works for competition. So remember for next time, and then as part of your pre-comp routine, have a place to, okay, what's my goal? What am I focusing on? And that can be the learning lesson from the horrible competition the day before that you were talking about earlier. And just a last little thing of mental toughness. I just believe if athletes and coaches consistently agree with the following statements after competition, then they were successful regardless of the outcome. This is my personal opinion. I gave 100% of my best effort throughout the competition regardless of outcome. So even though you're losing badly, you're still trying 100%. And none of this gave 150%. It's impossible to give more than 100%, people. Sorry, that's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> um, I kept my energy and attitude positive during competition at all times. So even after I made a mistake, I still had a positive attitude, positive energy. It was trying hard. I projected a strong and powerful physical presence. Useful even in sports like archery, where you might not suggest, you know, physical power is not really a big part of the sport, but it's that sense of confidence and this is my place to be. I deserve to be in this competition, in this sporting field. And I offered no excuses. I took responsibility for my own performance. Now, it's pretty easy sometimes to say yes to those when you perform really well. What about the last time you lost? Can you say yes to all those the last time you lost? Just a bit of a challenge. So I believe if you answer yes, you're basically doing the right thing. Because face it, in any competition, people are going to lose. That's part of sport. So defining your success solely on outcome isn't helpful, and it's not going to help you then perform better next time. If you continue to improve your performance every time, you're increasing your chances of the outcome you want. If you only focus on, oh, I lost, we suck, boo-hoo, that's not going to help you perform better next time. Doesn't matter who you are, what level you are, how atrocious the competition was, you would have done at least one thing right.